Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I am going to absolutely blow your mind right now with some real life facts. Hashtag life facts. I, Jules Gill, have made mistakes in the past. I know, I know, pick your jaws up off the floor. From fashion blunders to putting my foot in my mouth in spectacular fashion, I, alongside every other person in the world, have made and will likely continue to make stupid mistakes. However, fret not my friends because if you're a filmmaker, then you can always edit out these pesky little mistakes. And if you do a great job of this, the audience will likely never even know. Hell, if you're being really bold, then you can completely retcon your film series in order to hide your blunders. After all, you can't make a mistake if you never actually made it to begin with, or at least say you never did. Actually, maybe don't take that as a life message too literally, because that that could probably cause some real-life issues. Still, when it comes to cinema, these cuts and changes happen frequently, and so what better time than now than to look at some of the most egregious? As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 films that retconned themselves to fix glaring mistakes. Number 10. Halloween 2 – Michael's Sister Let's start with a particularly infamous offender, courtesy of the horror icon and perennial king of cool, John Carpenter. Now, Halloween is a pretty much flawless horror, the simple story of an unstoppable killer with seemingly no motive pursuing and picking off teens before being floored by a plucky, resilient final girl. And yet, the sequel, for some reason, looked to demystify all of this intrigue as we got the reveal that Laurie Strode was, in fact, Michael's secret sister. Oh, okay then. Apparently it was an idea that Carpenter admitted came to him while writing at 2am while being surrounded by empty beer bottles. Just the conditions that you want for a franchise-defining moment like this, right? Well, this was exactly the sort of bad call that was omitted from the recent reboot by David Gordon Green, who cut the familial ties and allowed Michael and Laurie to pick things up as bitter rivals and nothing more. Number 9. Men in Black 3 – Jay's Dad Throughout the otherwise uneven comedy sci-fi franchise, the titular men in black, K and J, have got stellar chemistry. The contrast between Will Smith's streetwise smartass J and Tommy Lee Jones's stoic, self-serious straight man K provide the biggest laughs of the series. However, in Men in Black 3, the final film prior to the 2019 disaster that was Men in Black International Reboot, we got a rather strange wrinkle to their relationship, namely that a young K actually met Jay's biological father, who then sacrificed himself to stop Boris. This then prompts K to keep tabs on Smith's J up until he's ready to join the Men in Black. Now, while this does explain how K would know about J, and it is definitely emotional, it's just not necessary, and the choice to retcon their relationship divided the fan base, or what was left of it after this delayed sequel finally came out. Number 8. Lethal Weapon 2 Riggs is his, 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 his wife. Whom amongst us didn't love the original Lethal Weapon? Quips and bullets flew with equal abandon in Shane Black's snappy and surprisingly brutal debut script. Seriously, go and rewatch this as it is way harsher and sadder than you remember. And yet, when a sequel rolled around, Black opted to focus less on the mayhem and instead attempted to deepen the lore of the franchise as the second film reveals the death of Riggs's wife was caused by one of the second movie's primary villains, a case of collateral damage during an attempted assassination of Riggs himself. It's a touch which serves both to reaffirm how dangerous the antagonists are and to turn this bullet storm into a personal revenge tale. It's a nice reminder, before we get deeper into this list, that not all retcons are cheap band-aid fixes, and the technique can be used to deepen and strengthen a story across numerous installments. Number 7. Halloween Resurrection – Michael's Death the franchise that can't die makes a second appearance in this list. But why, you ask? Well, dear viewers, because Halloween Resurrection sure does exist. A sequel to the surprise hit Halloween H2O, Halloween Resurrection was released in 2002 to ask the question on nobody's lips, when will rapper-turned-actor Buster Rhymes kung fu fight Michael Myers? Unfortunately, audiences didn't much care to see Buster Buster move on Haddonfield's most infamous murderer, and the film flopped disastrously. It's a shame since Resurrection pulled one of the most shameless retcons in horror history to bring Michael back in the first place. 
Opening with Laurie in an insane asylum, the film reveals that, contrary to what viewers saw in the previous installment, she didn't decapitate her bloodthirsty brother. Instead, that was a random paramedic whose larynx Michael crushed, meaning that he couldn't talk, before he dressed him in his iconic mask and then left him in the ambulance while he escaped. I tell you, he can move when he wants to, can't he? Number 6. Curse of Chucky, Chucky's Family and Relationship with Reality Here's a strange case, where the first three Child's Play films were straightforward horrors which saw Chucky the Possessed doll try to kill his former owner Andy, the fourth and fifth installment switched the tone for a broad horror comedy to tell a meta-story of Chucky, his bride Tiffany, and their child, even featuring cameos from the movie's cast as themselves. Wes Craven's new nightmare has got nothing on Jennifer Tilly playing herself, playing Tiffany, and then being killed by the real Tiffany, who of course is also voiced by Tilly. Oh, my head. With all of this interplay, it's understandable that the later sequel Curse of Chucky opted for a more grounded tone. Well, as grounded as a killer doll movie can be, that is. What's strange is the entire series is the brainchild of writer-director Don Mancini, making this a rare case of a director ignoring their own continuity as the franchise progressed. To complicate things further, Chucky has since been retconned by a new director and is now a malfunctioning AI rather than being possessed. Well, until the upcoming Don Mancini Helm TV series where he promises to re-establish the voodoo version of the character. Ow, my head, once again. Number 5. Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island The Scooby Gang's Age Right, so pour yourself a stiff drink for this one because Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island makes Halloween's continuity look absolutely crystal clear. The sequel to 1998 Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island is indeed the movie that turns its continuity into a mind the original Zombie Island features the gang all grown up, having parted ways and embarked on careers of their own. They're clearly out of the teens that they spend the original series in, with Daphne presenting a television show and Velma running a bookstore. So it's a challenge to explain how Return to Zombie Island features the gang now as teenagers again, recounting their adventures on the eponymous island a few months earlier. Now, for those keeping track, it seems that the Scooby Gang grew up, entered their twenties, got some new jobs, visited. Zombie Island and solved a mystery, then when it was time for nostalgia baiting sequels, they came home, de-aged themselves back into teens, lost their adult jobs, but kept their memories, and returned to Zombie Island both later in life, but also somehow younger in years. David Lynch bloody wishes that he could write like this. Number 4. I'll Always Know What You Did Last Summer – The Fisherman's Supernatural Abilities Another entry, another threequel, and another slasher flick. What are the odds? You might start thinking that there's some sort of pattern to this genre and the lack of care that goes in with each sequel. What's frustrating about the I Know What You Did Last Summer series is the third film's final twist, which reveals the hooded killer to be the ghost of the original film's deadly fisherman, and it could have been a clever retcon. The explanation of his supernatural capabilities could detail, for example, how the fisherman survived the first two films despite all odds and a Faded detection, except that the killer was very much flesh and blood in those films, as evidenced by his gory on-screen deaths in both. As such, the audience is left with a limp franchise killer, which threw in a paranormal explanation to justify its existence while complicating the preceding films in the process. Brilliant. Number 3. Scream 3 – Roman's Plans A decade before Scree 4M saved the franchise, and yes, I know it's pronounced Scream 4, but just… It's a silly joke, isn't it? The original trilogy was capped off by Scream 3, and oh, what a send-off it was. Missing the screenwriter for the first two movies, Kevin Williamson, who had moved on to bigger and better things like uh, teaching Miss Tingle. Yep, yeah, we'll move on from that. The third film wasn't content to simply disappoint audiences with smug meta jokes and warmed up jump scares. No, Scream 3 went the extra mile and tacked on a killer who had, surprise, engineered the murders of the first two movies as well as as the third. Wait, hang on, how could that make any sense? Well, in short, it doesn't, and there's a very good reason why this entry into the series flopped so hard, and it's an easy thing to pretend didn't happen when carrying on the series later down the line. Number 2. Friday the 13th Part 5 – Jason Goes to Hell – Jason's Demonic Form 
Where to begin with Mr. Voorhees, who has been dragged through so many revisions that his ever-changing character was the initial inspiration for this list. Now, Jason has gone to space, met Freddy, and has been rebooted by Platinum Dunes, but no retcon was as egregious as the fifth film in the franchise. In Jason Goes to Hell, where the titular character does nothing of the sort, until the last five minutes at least, Jason is revealed to be some sort of powerful demonic entity. Now capable of switching between bodies at will, he's unrecognized from the towering terror that we all know and kind of love. We definitely fear him, at least. The choice may explain his supernatural strength, speed and resilience, but it makes no sense when you consider that the earlier films made it clear that Jason is human with a consistent appearance and a living mother. Then again, later on, he's also part android space-based killing machine, so maybe answers are too much to ask from this series. And number one, The Descent Part 2, Sarah and Juno's Surprise Survival. Okay, so how best to put this? The Descent Part 2's continuity is harder to look at than a Mona Lisa made out of bum holes. The original cut of the first film, as screened for British audiences, ends with our heroine Sarah awakening from her delusion of escape to realise she's still very much trapped in the labyrinthine caves with a bevy of bloodthirsty crawlers on their way to make short work of her jugular. Not so cheery. But this ending was scrapped for American audiences, who were given the marginally less bleak ending of Sarah escaping the cave and driving, well, presumably as far away as possible. Now this is important, because the sequel opens with Sarah arriving at hospital. Bloodied and bruised, she's patched up, questioned by police, and then dragged back down into the exact same cave system in search of her missing compatriots. Honestly, what the hell was going on here? As if that weren't enough, the sequel also features the return of Juno, a character who died off-screen in the first film with her demise at the claws of the cave-dwelling creeps revealed to be, well, nothing more than a scratch in this version. Why not bring back the whole cast then, seeing as death seems to be but a little flesh wound nowadays? Jeez. And there we go, those were 10 films that retconned themselves to fix glaring mistakes. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. And as always, you have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.